And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he would not deceive the nations no more. Where's the power of deception come from in anybody's life? Right here. Any believer who is walking in deception, they're under the influence of demonic. That he should, that he should no more deceive the nations till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw the thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them who were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, which is out there right now through electronics. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. This is the kingdom age. But the rest of the dead, the wicked dead, weren't resurrected, lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. On the such the second death has no power. And they will be, shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan will be loosed out of his prison and will go out to do what he's always done under the power of deception, deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So we can obviously tell that the thousand years, the mortals were very fertile because it repopulated the earth numbering to the sands of the sea. And after a thousand years of witness, you have that many people when Satan is to shuck it all, follow Satan, and come against Christ one more time. It's pretty much an immediate defeat. Because Jesus said, no, don't fear, this stuff's got to happen. It's got to happen. So you don't need to be troubled about the tribulation, the trouble, the turmoil, and everything we need up to this. It's got to come to pass. So, as we look here in Zephaniah, Hezekiah's great-grandson called up before Jeremiah was, but you're going to see the same language. The word of the Lord came into Zephaniah, the son of Cushi, the son of Gildiah, the son of Amariah, the son of Hezekiah, in the days of Josiah. So he, his ministry like Jeremiah was what? In the days of King Josiah. You want to you see... An expansion of this, go to Chronicles and Kings and read about the days of Josiah. Okay? It's real easy to put the puzzle together. I will utterly consume all the things from off the land, says the Lord. Now, interesting enough, you know, if you want to dub this Old Testament scriptures, well, you go to Romans, the very first chapter, you begin to read, you you know, first rattle out of the box, you see the wrath of God. First rattle out of the box in Romans, it's the wrath of God. It's still there. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven, the fishes of the sea, and the stumbling blocks with the wicked. And I will cut off man from off the land, says the Lord. 
So even material nature is affected by man's sin. Mm. Because the Bible tells us that even creation is groaning for the day of the kingdom age. It's groaning for it. It's desiring it as much as we are, if you can get your head around that. <clears throat> because it's speaking just like every creation of God that he created speaks. I will also stretch out my hand upon Judah and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem and I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place and the name of the chairmen with the priests. They, these, these were interesting enough. These were the black-robed priests. Seen anything on news about black-robed people? People wearing hoodies. Mm. Dark hoodies. Gang members? You just fill in the blank. And them who worship the host of heaven upon the housetop, and them who worship and who swear by the Lord and who swear by, by Mount Cham, or this is another way of spelling whatever you want to say of Molech. Mm -hmm. Interesting. They swear by the Lord, but they also swear by their idols. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. Those who are turned back from the Lord, those who have not sought the Lord nor inquired of Him. See, the, the lady that was... No, no, man, come, see, they haven't inquired of the Lord. Now, you inquire, and you're earnestly... I've got, I gotta know the truth. <clears throat> he won't fail to manifest himself. Because if you're really earnestly, diligently seeking when he says, okay, well, you need to do this and you obey and do it, then here it comes. But then on the other side of that, oh, you do that and then the expansion of the revelation of himself gets broader and broader. Hold your peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand, for the Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has bid his guests. It will come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. In the same day also will I punish all those who leap on the threshold and will fill their master's house with violence and deceit. And it will come to pass in that day that the Lord, says the Lord, that there will be the noise of a cry from the fish gate and a howling from the second and a great crashing from the hills. How you inhabitants of Mektash, for all the merchant people are cut down, all they who bear silver are cut off. See, what did we written? Your silver and your gold ain't going to do nothing in the day. You can stockpile it all you want. It don't matter if the dollar crashes. Gold and silver is going to, yeah, it ain't going to do no good. If all business is going to come to a screeching halt, what flip good is it? It means nothing. I mean, you know, it, it's going to be terrible in a hurry. <clears throat> and there's no solutions with perplexity, Jesus says in the Gospels. No solutions. Confusion everywhere and no solutions. There's not going to the grocery store to get the milk that you run out of. You know, there's no going to work because there is no work. 
It's gone. Bam, it's gone. And is any reason that the first horse after the Antichrist is the red horse with a great sword given to him where they will kill one another? Because it's going to get bad in a hurry. And you people want to believe that you're going through that? Church? No. <laughs> you're an idiot. And it will come to pass at that time, verse 12, that I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish the men who are settled on their lees, who say in the heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. Luke 1. The attitude. Therefore their goods will become a booty. Their houses of desolation, they'll build houses, they're not inhabit them, they'll plant a vineyard, but they won't drink the wine. The great day of the Lord is near, it is near, it hastens greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord. What? What, is the, what do you think that says? It's near, it's near, it's near, even the voice. What happened here last Friday? Is the voice of the Lord speaking? Yes. And I mean, it was just like, seemed like every 15 seconds. Boy, I mean, it was just, well, bam! It wasn't just a rumble every now and then. Kingish war. It was a Gatling gun. <clears throat> Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man will cry there bitterly. Hmm. The man of strength is going to cry. That day is a day of wrath. It's a day of trouble. It's a day of distress. It's a day of wasteness. It's a day of desolation. It's a day of darkness. It's a day of gloominess. It's a day of clouds. It's a day of thick darkness. The day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. Is the mighty tower just rebuilt coming down again? I guarantee you it's coming down again. Guarantee you it's coming down again. Before we get out of here, I don't know that, but it's coming down. Again. And I will be, bring distress upon men that they will walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood will be poured out as dust and their flesh is done. Name but one can give you eyes to see and ears to hear. And he has a condition to that. I'm the one that brings the distress. I'm the one who blinded the eyes of Israel. Who will open the eyes of Israel. And you're in control of things. <laughs> he who sits in the heavens laughs at you. That's what this book says. He laughs. And again, Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land will be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. 
for he will make even a speedy riddance of all those who dwell in the land. Seven years is not a very long period of time. Is it? <clears throat> speedy. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah. See, if you're not careful when you read heavily into the books of the prophets, you can almost become complacent. Because they say the same thing. And it's like you turn from one gloom to the other gloom to the other gloom to the other gloom to the other gloom. Why did he take up so much pages with gloom? Hard-headed, deaf children, maybe. <laughs> Jeremiah 7. Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will you steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swell falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom you know not? And you come and you stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do these abominations? How would that be quoted today by the average church member? Where are you? Jeremiah 7, let me see. Seven, eight. Eight, nine, Chapter 7, eight, verse 8. 8, 9, and 10. Okay, sorry, thank you. We're all sinners saved by grace. I can do what I want to. Save my the way this says it, will you steal, murder, and commit adultery and perjury, and offer incense to Baal, and walk after other gods whom you have not known, and then come and stand before me in this house that bears my name, saying, We are saved, so that you may keep doing all these abominations? So would it be fair to say then that their thinking, as I've heard preachers say, which is true, that the blood of Jesus Christ goes on cleansing. And so these people come into the temple thinking that their past actions or prayer because they came to Christ therefore covers all of their sin past, present, and future, even if they keep on sinning. So I'm delivered to continue to do all of these abominations. It's okay. In this house which is called by my name, or is this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, says the Lord. But go you now unto my place which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first. Shiloh uh, to Israel was like the temple of Solomon was to Jerusalem in its day. And so the first place that God wiped was Shiloh. And he said, go there. See what I did in that place. Look at the past in order to understand the present. Where I set my name at the first and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. 
And now because you have done all these works, says the Lord, and I've spoken to you rising up early and speaking, in other words, being diligent in my pursuit of this matter, but you wouldn't hear. I called, but you wouldn't answer. Therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, and since you're the temple, you're the house. God's an individual God, and He's calling every individual, and has been for a number of years. But have you answered them? Israel's heart would no, they wouldn't. Therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein you trust, and unto the place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. And I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of who we've been seeing about for a number of weeks. What I did to Shiloh, I'm going to do to, I'll do to Ephraim. What I did to Ephraim, I'm going to do to you, Judah. What God has done all of that, church, what is He going to do to you? To hear that He's calling about. Judgment delayed is not judgment denied. Not ever. Not ever will be. So look what I did. Now, a shift. <clears throat> and we're going to close this session. We're not going to go to 630. We started with meet in due season. Appointed times, proper times. We're going to numbers. Mm -hmm. All right. And we're going to finish with that as a reminder that God has a time and place for everything. And it's not up to you to debate it. It's up to you to obey it. Numbers 9, we're not going to read this whole thing because it's the point about the appointed season. Verse 2, verse 3, verse 7, verse 13. Yeah, why not? Read it. And the Lord spoke unto Moses in the wilderness at Sinai. In the first month of the second year, after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season. Personal pronoun. After you come out of Egypt. After your salvation experience, you keep the Passover. And you remember that you were a bond slave. You remember that you were a slave to sin. Well, I tell you, un under the new covenant, keeping Passover, where the revelation is there, and it's not just a... Ritual. Yeah. But see, I don't think people can rejoice in keeping Passover if you, have, if you don't know... The deliverance from sin. Let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season. And this is a Hebrew equivalent of Kairos. In the fourteenth day of this month, at evening you will keep it in his appointed season. Here's God with hiccups again according to all the rites of it and according to all the ceremonies thereof, you will keep it. 
What part of you will do it do we not get? And Moses spoke to the children of Israel that they should... Somebody uh, pat God on the back and get rid of his burps. Why, why does he keep repeating himself? Our ears. And they kept the Passover. And they kept the Passover, not just whenever they wanted to, on the 14th day of the first month at evening in the wilderness of Sinai, according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so did the children of Israel. And there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man, that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day, and those men said unto him, Moses, we are defiled by the dead body of a man. Wherefore we are kept back that we may not offer an offering of the Lord in his appointed season among the children of Israel. And Moses said unto them, Stand still, and I will hear what the Lord will command concerning you. Hear this. You had best get the mind of the Lord because this book says in Peter, everything pertaining to life and godliness is found here. Everything leaves nothing out. I don't care what you're trying to decide. I don't care what you're fixing to attempt to do. It's found right here. God will show himself. He'll show the answer. If you're not looking, <coughs> you won't be found by you. So stand still. The Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, speaking to the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you out of your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, or is in a journey far, far away, and he will keep the Passover unto the Lord, the fourteenth day of the second month. This is on, the only feast where there is a provision to keep it a second time. If you're not prepared. Thus Paul, in the warning in Corinthians, do not partake of the Passover time unworthily. For this reason, many of you are sick and some of you have died because of it. That's how important this is because this is representative of the sacrifice of Christ. That you keep it. And for whatever reason you're not able to keep it, you have a provision, okay, wait till the second month, get yourself Straightened up, clean, whatever you need to do, but you keep it. You're not excused from it. <clears throat> you will keep it and eat with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall leave none of it under the morning, nor break any bone of it. According to all the ordinances of Passover, they will keep it. But the one who is clean, and he's not in a far journey, there is absolutely no reason for him not to keep the Passover, but he decides, I ain't going to do this. Hmm. He doesn't treat it with its proper respect. A man who is clean and is not in a journey and decides not to keep the Passover, even that same soul will be cut off, which means you lose your soul, from among his people because he brought not the offering of the Lord in his appointed season. That man will bear his sin. 
That ought to put the fear of God in you, but it don't. See, judgment delayed is not judgment denied. Judgment delayed is not judgment denied. Why is the penalty so severe? Because you present an offering made by fire. Your you're presenting your body clean, holy, acceptable unto the Lord. It's your reasonable service. Because He's done everything for the victory. And you don't do it. Basically, it's blasphemy in the face of God. How many fall into this category, you reckon? See, all it takes is for a believer one time, one time to read, and most people, when even the most loose, yeah, they give them a New Testament, but you need to read through the Bible. What's it make them? Accountable. Accountable. They get to this and it's like, this is not what I'm being taught. Why am I not being taught this? And so they go to the leaders. Why don't we do this? Oh, But see, God says, I know how to deliver mine out. They want out, I know how to deliver them. Me sitting in a Southern Baptist church. Huh? That ain't what this book says. Hmm? What? That's why I got into so much hot water. Parents after me. I oh, just... It was ridiculous. Grown adults. That's what the book says. I don't care what the denomination says. It's what the Word of God says. How many people right there is guilty of that? everyone who's ever read it the first time and doesn't obey it. So that's where Michael couldn't get his head around you. Man, you're saying the whole church is wrong. No, I'm not saying that. God's saying that. The whole lump's leavened. It's all corrupt. I'm just telling you what it says. And if you don't come out of that system, you will be a partaker of their sins. I didn't say that either. Come out of her, my people. What did we read in the name? Don't go to Bethel. Oh. Don't go to the house of God. It's full of wickedness. And that's what Beth Haven, when you read about Beth Haven, its reference is to Bethel. Because Beth Haven means house of wickedness. Sheesh. It's horrible. But it's true. Guess we got through 13, didn't we? Hmm. So as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do remember the Lord's death until we sit down again at Passover in the Millennial Kingdom. If you think the ordinance of communion has replaced Passover, you're an idiot. It hasn't. You're not going to have communion in the Kingdom Age. 
You're going to celebrate the Passover because it's Jesus Christ. He didn't institute a new ordinance. He explained the ordinance. This is why you've been doing it all these thousands of years. And it ain't going away because not one jot or tittle of the law is going to pass until everything, what well, part of everything gets fulfilled do you not understand? Are we today on the other side of everything being fulfilled? No. So not one jot or tittle of the law, just like what we was reading in Isaiah about the kingdom age. There's going to be people because the law will go forth out of Zion. There will be people executed during the kingdom age. There's no appeals court because Christ is sitting on the throne and the law will go forth out of Zion. You can rebel, but he's not going to allow a huge uprising because he's ruling with a rod of iron. And I feel pity for you if you don't understand what we just read. It's an awesome gift, just like the Feast of Trumpets. Acts 24. back up to let's go to 22 and when Felix heard these things having more perfect knowledge of the way that's what believers in Messiah were called in the early days he deferred them and said when Messiah is the chief captain shall come down I will know the uttermost of your matter and he commanded the centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty and that he should forbid none of his acquaintances to minister or to come unto him. And after certain days when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a Jewish, Jew, Jewess, Felix sent for Paul. And he heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And he, as he, Paul, reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, this is just basically another way of saying sin, righteousness, self or, uh, judgment to come. Because the opposite of righteousness is what? Unrighteousness. Or sin. The opposite of self-control. Judgment to come. Felix trembled and answered. Never had anybody do this? Go your, uh, go your way at this time. Uh, okay, with this part company. When I have a more convenient kairos. When I have a more convenient proper time. A more convenient appointed time. According to my intellect. I'll call for you. And we'll discuss this again. Like Felix, I've heard the same thing said 101 different ways that nobody never had a more convenient Kairos. We never talked about it again. 
Why? Because just like Felix, even trembling under the conviction of the Holy Spirit to turn. No, just can't give up the worldly way. I'm under my comfy little tree in, in my church, which is not your church. And after all, that's so inconvenient to do. It's so inconvenient to keep Sabbath, to keep that. Shoot, why do you want to do all that work? So, why do you reckon God wants to close today with a convenient season. Why does he want to leave you with that being the last word? putting it off you're going to deceive yourself more and then you get to the end and I think this is where a lot of, a lot of people think oh well, I'll just do it later mm -hmm. may not be I'll just and even those in the church or I'll repent later at the end when I see him coming or if there is a rapture I'll repent then and but I'll just keep doing what I'm doing Mostly it's because people think his mercy endures forever, but they don't understand what his mercy is, which is actually giving you warning. What did, what did Mary, we saw this morning, what does she confess according to his word? Your mercy is to those who fear you. What is he saying to you? Why is he telling you, Elizabeth? Convenient season. Why is he closing this day with convenient season for you? Sometimes we might not get a second chance. Tell somebody something. What about you, Brian? Well, I'm like a lot of people that say stuff so far this is the most convenient season is right now it's like you said he is what's his most convenient season I mean he said let me wait till more convenient there's no waiting this is the convenient season is right now so there's no waiting for it it's here we're granted a whole another year till next trumpets and I mean you ain't gonna wait another year and you start right now to even Probably even halfway accomplish what you need to accomplish. Here. But so this is the convenience. This season. is this. This is it. Time in now. About you. Too much waiting, putting off. My life. Todd, man of many words. Just get on the ball. He's given us time to change, but now it's time for us to 
actually do something, push forward. Time to quit beating the air. response. Well, I never thought of that, but that's true. See? You, you know, yeah, you might get spit on. But don't let it deter you. I mean, you never know who you're talking to. I mean, I ended up talking to a pastor and I had no idea I was talking to a pastor. But I challenged him. Before I knew he was a pastor. To look at God's feast, not as Jews' feast, but as God's. That he has appointed times, and there's a reasoning behind everyone. And afterwards, I was glorifying the fact that God had utilized, let my mouth fly. <laughs> and It's a gift. It's a gift. <laughs> but it's never. He's giving you, life. giving you a golden tongue for a reason too, Bubba. <laughs> Questions or comments? Mindset all the time, but we can do that later. So, 
for us, it's it's a, a, a discipline. Yeah, it's one of the scripture verses to those who are on their lees. Sit on their laurels. Mm -hmm. Laid back and comfy. Well, I guess since the young choir is fixing to get cranked up, we might as well close for the day. Father, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for the manna from heaven. And we thank you that uh, through your grace, you give us the power to walk in what you have revealed. So we bless your name. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu in Yeshua Amashiach's name.